You mean rather than yes, I know. Yes, yes, correct. Roll call so everybody's here and got it on Zoom, I believe. Approve the agenda. Make motion to approve the agenda. Okay, motion by main center to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Mr. Chairman, public participation of the council, if you have any. Uh, approval of minutes last meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Okay. Second. Motion made in silent to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Right. All opposed. All right. So then uh, review and act on county GT, county G at first. So this. Great. So this is County Double C. It's just south of 82, about two miles. Uh, goes to the east and connects in the one share county. Um, like I mentioned, I brought two versions of this proposal to you. So one is to mill it, mill an inch off, and then overlay it with two inches. Within that process, though, we would widen it. It'd be so. Let me refer. Let me let me back up. We would mill two inches off. The shoulders would be cut. A, a, a three foot stinger or a three foot asphalt would be put next to the existing mat. And then that would be capped entirely with, with asphalt. Two so inches. Yeah. yeah, two inches. Okay, so that, that's the mill widened overlay. I should no. rephrase that, but that's the intent with the mill and overlay process uh, would work. Um, we've done it before on other roads. So it does it does happen. And the other option that I brought forward is the pulverized full depth pulverization and then pave four inches because that asphalt would be removed, then we'd put a new paving structure. There. So that's the uh, reason for the cost difference. As you can see, the mill and widen and overlay is uh, 272. Uh, and then the pulverize and pave. Now, when I say pulverize and pave, then we still get, we're still going to get that same uh, pavement with something. Yeah, you're still going wider. Yeah, 12, uh, three. 12 and three. Yeah. So 12 foot uh, paved, 12 foot lanes, three foot paved, one foot gravel. Okay. Uh, and you can see that's that's more, uh, 300, about 391,000. So um, in order to do this either way, mill and overlay or pulverize and pave, either option, whichever one, uh, both of these are going to be improvements to, to county double C. So don't think, think of the pulverize and pave as right, the, almost like the ultimate, right? That's, that's, the, that's the perfect answer. Um, the mill and overlay is still, still a good project. Uh, both of these options, either one, uh, is going to take a little bit more money than what we had allocated for this. So we had 250,000 allocated for county double C, and we had 250,000 allocated for double X, which is on the south, very south end of the county. If we use those funds, um, you know, we pull some of the money from double X, use it on double C, we can do either one of these projects. There, there are funds there. What would happen though is double X uh, would get set aside, uh, moved down, and or potentially seal coated. It would get definitely get moved down. It wouldn't happen this year. Um, that that would be down. Double X. I'm talking. Did I say that wrong? I'm sorry. He looked at me like, "Well, you do. it's double X would be postponed or moved down on our improvement schedule." So. Um, Thoughts or questions, I guess. Um, when you think about double C, you know, uh, a couple of us know what, what goes on out there. Um, it does get used. Uh, it's a it's a one mile stretch, but there's a lot of there's a lot of ag and, and commercial traffic on that one mile stretch of road. Just it does, it gets a lot of use. As far as milling that is uh, the base uh, asphalt still good enough for that. To handle that? Yeah. So remember when we were talking about this previously. I, I, if if it's if it's left up to my decision, I really don't want to uh, uh, get into or or aggravate the base structure or the subgrade of this this road because what we did uh, 
oh, probably 22, 23 years ago, um, is there was this, I'm going to call it just a special blend of rock, okay, for lack of a better term, because I, I, I didn't look it up. Uh, there was a spe there was a special grade of rock that was dump spread on the grade, and that was milled or pulverized into the gravel, it was into the existing. And then uh, after that, they came back with uh, with an oil and injected that oil and sprayed it on the road. It was kind of a messy process. That was again pulverized into that structure, and then that was all compacted down. So uh, as far as the, the Gravel or the subgrade and gravel, I, I would not get into that. I, would, I wouldn't mess with that, and we wouldn't add any if if um, if if the decision is to pulverize it. I wouldn't propose adding in gravel. We would pulverize it and pave on top of that. Yeah. So the pulverization will stay there. Stay the on the grade. Yeah. 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 So you're and actually going to add four inches more base. Would uh, to, yeah, to, you know what you write exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and yes, in a sense, yes, and slightly no, because we'll have to widen out a little bit we get to down. get our to get our width and crown correct and everything yeah. like that. But I mean, you're, you're going to be milling the, the base part off the builders right now, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Sorry. with, with uh, uh, I don't know if I maybe I answered your question incorrectly. So the the my our thought process in, with the milling procedure would be to trim our shoulders off. So wind roll the shoulder out, leave that gravel lay there, uh, do the milling or whatever it is, and then put that milling still yeah stinger on there. Yeah, and I just my my. Feeling is the way to go is to pulverize and pave the whole the whole width so that you don't have even though you're you're pulverizing two inches off or milling two inches off and trying to put that stinger on it's still a cold joint there in my opinion I think I think for for the traffic and for what we do up there I I think that the extra money is well worth the to go and do it right in my opinion I agree with Ben. I mean, pulverize that. We're not going to get into that, that special blend that's on the EPET to let it. We'll, you know, just we'll, we'll try and keep them just into the blacktop. Right. We'll talk with our contractor. I know the idea is to be. They can sometimes get pretty deep. Yeah. 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 You, you could, always, and I don't know whether when they bring their mill in and stuff, but I know Matthew's getting to the point where they have the technology where they can go and set up the total station and then we'll run off that. And, and, Trim it right to where it needs to be in it. And those mills, even if they get into that a little bit, it ain't going to chew it all up. It's just going to cut it, cut it right off. At that, yeah, point. So that oil will be all mixed right in with the asphalt and choose it. But I make a motion we go with the uh, bid form alternate two with uh, gas or construction for $390,946.20. Mm -hmm. And most of the main thing to go with uh, the higher bid in uh, pulverize. Is there any other discussion? Not all in favor of motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Can we confirm? I, I see. Diana, can we? Oh, there's Mr. Peace. All right. My my uh, battery's running low in the, or the laptop, so I got my phone too. Yeah. Okay. You were in favor with Scott. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Discuss an act on construction oversight county CC. Uh, so this is. Um, <coughs> Just yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the, the attachment open. I thought mm -hmm. I had it all open. This is uh, for construction oversight on the project we just talked about. Uh, this is through our, our general engineering agreement with the ECOM. 
Um, we've talked with Bob about this and about the potential for two different options. He still feels comfortable with what we have here. Now remember, um, these people are working just down the road from this project. So it's the same staff in a sense. So we're trimming down the cost, I would imagine, if you would say, and there's some probably some some efficiencies to be had because we are so close in proximity. So this is the uh, the, the projected uh, construction oversight for the project that you just uh, just uh, awarded in gas. Make a motion that we accept the uh, ACOM's uh, oversight proposal. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded to use the proposal, appraisal from uh, ACOM. Is there any other discussion? Not all in favor of motion say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Motion carried. Got I. Uh, we got Mr. Pieces for this as well. Okay. 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 I'm good. Okay. It's going to send our act on surplus transportation program rural grant submission. So this is the grant program where we have built County Z out of uh, down south here. Same program that we built County Z up north out of. The next cycle is now over. So it's uh, our opportunity to make a selection on road for submission. So I'm what I'm looking for is some direction as to what road would you like me to submit for this grant application. Now, um, I can give you my thoughts if you like. County Z, okay? Uh, County L is funded. We should be complete and constructed. Uh, but but this is really where you should, you know, give me some direction on what you would like to submit for this fund. It's 80-20. I'd like to hear your input. County Z. I mean, that's, that's where to be. I think uh, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of going to be our couple of different reasons. One, uh, I would propose that we choose this segment right adjacent to our previously approved STP project. So we would connect at Edgewood and do down to H. And I say that distance because that is about, uh, that dollar amount is about where they like to fund. You start getting projects in excess of 3 million, they tend to start shying away a little bit in this big project. So I've already talked to the DOT about it, um, thought that this might be the route we were headed. And uh, you know, guarantees, of course, uh, from the DOT that we would get this money. But I did remind them politely that we did not get a dollar of the BIL money. So this uh, should almost be a shoe in for us here, right? <laughs> Uh, but we wouldn't commit to that for So uh, we try in this program. Uh, how this works is it's a, it's an entitlement uh, program. So Adams County and all others have a, a balance, and it goes up and down. We are currently negative balance, uh, about six seven hundred thousand. That in by itself does not mean anything. That doesn't preclude you from submitting. It doesn't. Mean you won't get a project. It just means our entitlement balance is negative. That's it. Uh, we've gotten projects with negative balance before. So well, that's I'm, my thoughts. I'm in favor of getting Z done. I'd like to see that project get done from 82 to 21 as soon as possible. As far as I know you would. So. <laughs> I really would. I've been in the room with you folks and I heard the same thing. Yeah. So that's my thought on that. Uh, unless there's there's different. And when it, and so you just submit to one project. I can submit. I can submit multiple projects. So because uh, down there you're gonna you're gonna have those two bridges. You got two grading projects and two bridges, correct? Yes. So there's actually three projects. Yeah, the county yes and not kind of no. So let me uh, have the the overall county Z discussion. Um, I have funding allocated to. And you might have to help me. I don't remember that. I have funding, I think it's Duck Creek, first one south of um, H. 
I have funding allocated towards that $100,000 I have allocated towards that bridge, that culvert that will become a bridge. Okay. Um, my intent was that, and, and you guys can change my direction at any point, of course. Uh, my intent was that we will be eligible for another, that $100,000 is called LREP funding. It's LREP. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's our funding, so I can we can all use it almost anywhere on just about anything. That that is bridge. That first bridge is where I allocated that first hundred thousand dollars for. That's from a previous cycle. We will be we will be eligible again for this that same hundred thousand dollars again because that the our program is opening up, and I again was going to allocate that hundred thousand dollars towards the other bridge. I think it's White Creek down south by by Donnie's place there, uh, for those two structures. And those would be, those structures and approaches would be constructed independently of one another. Uh, we, you, know, see, uh, you can't do both at the same time. Then there's the grading projects down there as well. Yep. So I would, def I can definitely, I have before, um, wrote multiple applications for this program. And I can do it again. Because the big thing is for the South grading is you'd want to have those bridges done before you had the, before you yeah. before you did the grading down there, I would think, wouldn't you? Rephrase that again. I mean, from the South project. You from, do from, not want you, the bridges done? You would want the oh, bridges. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. want the bridges done before you Degree. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, correct. Uh, the, the thought was to try to get the bridges done in advance of the grading project. And uh, yeah, we will absorb a little, little bit of a, a financial impact or a financial obligation to those structures. Uh, but but it, it won't be terrible. Uh, I, I can't remember the estimate. I think it was like 350, somewhere right there. So we'd be out like 225, 250, 250,000, somewhere right there, yeah. plus the 100 that is yeah. allocated there. And then, uh, but that also included in my estimate, um, that also included um, the approach work as well, because we won't just do the structure, the, the approaches. And uh, the approaches on the north structure are lengthy. I think on the north end, they were like, because you're going to change the profile. And on the south end of that structure was like 800. So it, it's a stretch of road plus. So my thought was to try to fund the first bridge I have scheduled. This one I looked at it today, actually, uh, 2024. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Chris said yes. And then the, the other one would follow in 2025. The, the earliest we can handle an STP project year like this will be 2025 because we're committed to the yeah. county m and 24 yeah. our, our construction money is committed out there and that's what we will need for our 20 percent match of hopefully when we get a, a project out on z and i mean that's where you get we would probably fall in the schedule anyways by the time if you got this 80 20 by the time they updated the plans and got mm -hmm. the and got the all those landowners and stuff all signed back on and stuff like yeah. that. With the, yeah, the easiest, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think we go with that first stretch, like you said. <laughs> I don't know whether it pays to put in both of them or not, but I mean, that, yeah, I know. It, yeah, I think that first one is get that one done first. And, going from Edgewood to H. H at least. Yeah. So when I say H, that mean uh, when I say H, I mean what what I actually mean is to my to the counties to our finished approaches on the on the bridge because yeah. that'll be just south of yeah. yeah. So I want to try to tie into that. That's the idea. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll be in thousand and fifty. Yeah. So I make a motion that we. Uh, we apply for the uh, SPR PR grant for uh, 
Edgewood down just south of H. Second. Okay, motion to make the second to apply for the FPP grant. Is there any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Scott was good. He's good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an aye. Yeah, I'm an aye. Okay. Review and discuss highway uniform policy. Yep, so uniform policy discussion. I mean, I, I know I sent out a couple of emails and then hopefully you guys caught these when they were coming through. Um, I think you maybe, hopefully, have heard me talk about this a little bit before that I was working on something or going to bring something before the committee at some point. And so that day is here. Um, had this little uh, uh, policy drafted up and I, you know, I circulated it amongst. Uh, folks here in the county for council. It's been at uh, uh, the finance office as well. So they've had a peek at it. And so uh, that's our thoughts or that's that's what we were working on is, is, a, is a uniform policy for our outside crew. Uh, this one here talks about pants and shirts. Um, one of the areas here, um, oh, here it is. Um, in this, in my version here, this, this is my draft, this is what I wrote up. Um, I eliminated some of the stuff. So like, uh, if I'm saying it correctly, area pants, I eliminated those, those are higher priced pants. Um, I eliminated the flame resistant clothing that's really not required for our guys out in the field. Um, and when you, uh, if you check in some of our emails here and you come down uh, that went around uh, to cost, it, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a free program. Uh, but when you add these up and you start looking at these 18 employees, you're looking around $18,000 for, to put uniforms on our outside crew. That is real money. That, that's, that's money that will get billed those funds will come out of the county truck highway maintenance line item. That's where those items will get built. That's what those funds will be um, used on. Okay. Um, it's it's not, it, it, and just because somebody else is doing it doesn't mean that everybody else has to. But other counties are doing similar programs like this. For example, um, Wood County is doing this program through the same clothing vendor. Uh, it's uh, Marquette County is doing not quite this far, uh, but they are providing, they have provided shirts in the past for their employees. So it, it's not, it's not, uh, don't take this as a Adams County, Adams County exclusive thought process. Uh, it's not, it's really something that I, other counties are doing as well. And I, I thought I would bring it here for some more discussion. What's the cost to the employee? Uh, there would be no cost to the employee. So similarly to what our shop employees currently have, uh, the county provides the uniform mm -hmm. that they get a pants, actually they get pants, shirt, and a, a coverall, uh, but they don't have a cost in that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know in Quincy, we, the township pays for trucks out there. He gets uniforms like that. I mean, because you don't know with when you're working out here with oil and stuff like that. I mean, you can ruin your clothes pretty so, quickly out there. Um, so uh, I don't know how many garments for each. Uh, for nine. For nine. So it'd be nine, nine for two weeks. Yep. So not the, the, the employee, I think Mr. Pease has a question. The nine, there'd be nine sets. Yeah. Uh, the employee was always have uh, five or a four at home, right? And one, one he's wearing, and the four he's returning, right? And then on that exchange day, he picks up the other set. Yeah. Scott, did you have a question? I got a few of them. The first okay. one: Do they uh, get a, a something for their boot? Boots, boot allowance, or anything like that. 
We didn't hear you very good, Scott. He's asking about the boot allowance. Do they no. have boot okay. Yep. Boot allowance. Yep. I, I caught most of it. There is a boot allowance program that's run here um, at highway and at, at another department. So boot allowance is currently $125. How the boot program works here is that we give the employee a boot voucher. Uh, that boot voucher is good for $125 at Rogan Shoes. They can take that voucher up there and buy safety boots, safety footwear with it. If they choose not to do that, they can buy boots elsewhere, but then they have to bring in proof that it's safety, safety footwear with their original uh, receipt to get reimbursement up to that 125. Okay, with, with that being said, um, are most of the guys wanting to do the uniform thing or, and will everybody be doing it? So, I, I mean, that is, if, if you had a chance to read through this, this little policy here, um, I, I guess we'll call it a uniform policy, but when I was talking to the guys and I was thinking about it, I don't want to, I don't want to be the uniform police. If you want to wear a shirt uh, like we have hanging here, that's fine. We can provide, potentially provide that. But if you don't want the shirt, you don't have to get the shirt. Uh, the shirt we're looking at is a, it's a button down collared shirt. It's a class three uh, shirt. So it has the correct reflectivity, the, the correct amount of reflectivity on. So um, I kind of wanted to leave it, if it's moved forward, flexible to the employee. If they, that's fine. If they don't use it, there's no other means of compensation or reimbursement. This is it. You either use the clothing program or you don't. It's your choice. Um, our vendor comes once a week uh, and does the exchange of clothing. Oh, for later in the year, are they going to long sleeve shirts? The there is a long sleeve option here with the class three, that same shirt in a long sleeve. Some of the guys have mentioned that if it does move forward, they're probably going to do two and three or three and two or some combination of short sleeve and long sleeve. Okay. Um, so I just think the, in the time they might want the long sleeve. I, I, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, talk my policy out of inception, but I, I, I think it's only fair that we have a little bit more discussion. And, and I, I kind of hopefully advise our employees of this as well. I know Chris and I have talked about it. Uh, Mr. Pete, Chair. Pete? Go ahead, Scott. Has it been floated of uh, giving them like, just like you do the booth for dollars and they can go purchase their own to show them the vendors? Would uh, limit uh, the person in all the uh, water we're buying every year? I've, I've been in both situations and I like the the uh, $600 cash every year. So then I could go purchase my sizes, whatever clothes I like. And that has that ever been discussed, I guess. So we, we caught most of it, I think. Um, I think I got the gist of what you were asking. Um, I think if I could just rephrase, I think the question or the comment was, have we considered doing a uh, clothing allowance, some type of dollar amount for, for clothing. And we, we did, uh, we had some early discussions and I, I believe county manager might be on or not. Listen, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Our discussion was that the thought was they, the, the, the county providing the clothing was more favorable at that point. I would think so, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Well, I guess my thought on that is, um, if you if you go that route, 
you're gonna, it seems to me anyway, that you're gonna, the burden of getting the clothing that they wanna buy that's suitable and approval for what they're gonna use it for, you you avoid that if you just, if you, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I mean, you're not, they can't just wear any old shirt. So I, I, I get it both ways. I, you know, I, I understand what Mr. Pease is, is getting at and, and talking about here. Um, and, and I've had that discussion internally here with guys already. Um, I like these jeans and I only like these jeans. I'm one of those guys. But um, after they've thought about it for a bit and, uh, you know, as, as we discussed it and talked about what a pair of jeans actually cost, uh, they they kind of all are jumping on board with the jeans. They're the ones that's got to wash them at that point too. That, well, that's that's what I was going to get at is you guys. I mean, some guys are in a trucks and they they might not get too dirty during the day, but you have these patch crews out here or the the they're peeling and uh, I I can't believe that they don't get oil and stuff on oh. their on their jeans and then they have to go home and run them through their their wash machines. We. We have guys that are anxiously awaiting something, something to happen, or they're hoping something yeah. moves in one direction or another. Um, what I was going to say is, we talk about genes, and and I and I really hope I need to rephrase that because my policy talks about pants. Some of our employees are going to opt to wear more of a polyester work type pants. Um, I think I'm trying to describe that the best I can. It 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 it, it has the so look like of uh, slacks. Uh, yeah, for lack of like what the mechanics. Yeah, exactly. You, yes, you yes, see yes, the mechanics yes, wearing. Yeah. Yeah. So some guys are going to opt into those. They they feel those are going to be uh, better better for them. A couple guys already wear them here uh, on our crews. Um, again, I I I I think it's only fair that I continue my discussion and I, I, I don't want to talk myself out of this policy or talk you out of it. Like Mr. Bork was mentioning earlier, there is value to this if it moves forward. There's no doubt about it, there is. When you don't have to launder or mend your clothes, that's that's some, that's that's that translates to a cost savings of $40-$50 jeans. The big when you look at when you look at this um, this email here, hopefully you get a chance to look at it. The 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 cost of this, the larger cost to this is the shirt. You see the cost dollar fifty seven per piece, and that's per shirt is yeah. what they're talking yeah. about. However, uh, a Carhartt jean uh, is forty three cents. Yeah. And that's what draw. That's what's driving the the larger cost of this potential program up. And I'll bring that up, and I will say it out loud. And I'll we but but an option if cost is a concern. And I want to talk more about cost before we go. Uh, hopefully, make uh, sway anybody's minds. One of the options we was, I was thinking about, uh, it's a button down collared shirt, uh, $1.57 per piece. That translates to, to a, a cost. Um, you could do pants. You could not do the shirts. You could do pants. And the pants by themselves uh, would be in the, I uh, remember wrote down here. Uh, four so it'd be about forty two hundred dollars if you just did pants. Four thousand two hundred dollars. If 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 that was a consideration, I would then ask uh, for some additional uh, latitude uh, because what I would offer then is I could the county and I don't mean to say me I. I can't write a check uh, for this. Uh, the county could potentially buy shirts separately and just hand those shirts to the employee and say, there's five shirts. Make them last as long as they last, uh, but you get five. If I was ever to replace those, 
I would have to come back here and say it's been three years or two years. Um, can can I buy can I buy can I expend some funds on shirts again for the guys? The the difference is that okay, so what would what would shirts potentially cost? Um, so we looked, um, actually got a couple, you know, my email gets bugged up with stuff. So this popped in my email box, surprisingly, right about the same time I was talking about doing this. This shirt here. Uh, comes in short sleeve or long sleeve. Uh, you can see we'd be in that fourteen dollar range for that type of shirt. Uh, so if we were to if we were to provide if we were to provide four shirts, hand it to the employee and say there you go, uh, that would be about a thousand bucks. Then wash. They'd have to wash them on their own. Them down. They would have to wash them on their own. If they ripped them, that would that would be it. There would be no mending of that shirt by the county. Like with suits, if anything gets tore or anything, they have to repair them or correct. That yeah. that's that would be part yeah. of the garment care that we would purchase for the garments. So, and so if you had to change sizes. You had to change size. That has happened. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. can change okay. sizes. Yeah. Uh, in regards to size, I already talked to actually, we, we caught CentOS today, and uh, I asked that question if, if we decide to move forward, what's our best option? And we talked about doing a, uh, an in person bidding so that hopefully we get it right. They get it right, or we get it right the first time, and then when the, when the clothes show up, they they fit the way the, the employees are hoping that, that they would. So it is real money. Uh, it is not uh, real cheap. But I, I would just uh, like to mention what happens when we do work. Uh, we do work for others. We do work for townships. We do work for other counties. And I'll just give you one example of this type of scenario. Uh, this past week, this week, this week alone, this past week, uh, we've had 14 employees, 14 guys uh, working in other locations. In that one week, uh, that and I used a two-year rate and some of our guys are higher, some are lower, but I used a two year uh, wage rate. Uh, so in this one week, there was over $14,000 that's being paid by another agency. Uh, in this case, Portage County, that's where we're working. We're seal coding for Portage County. Mm -hmm. We do this all the time. Uh, as long as they have money, they hire us to, to seal code with them. So in this one week alone, there is $14,000 being paid off somebody else's payroll, not ours. So when I mentioned that, I just was saying that, you know, there is, my argument would be is that we could use some of those funds to fund this program. Right. What happens with that? Uh, it's not, we're not being paid on fire payroll. It's being yeah. paid by somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so, question is that, uh, it, and I don't, maybe you have the number, Chris, or anything, but obviously you go through a certain amount of vests a year, safety vests. And if you get good quality ones, those aren't cheap. And obviously when it gets sweatshirt weather and stuff, you're still going to have to go back to vests unless you're going to be getting jackets or light jackets. But, uh, but through the summer months, you're not going to, I mean, those vests should in turn lasts a lot longer. I mean, you, I used to have probably three different ones depending on whether it was a running on a shirt or running on a sweatshirt or running on a winter coat because I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's different sizes. You gotta, you, know, you don't want a loose one out there going and it's got to fit over the top of stuff. But. Most exactly. And so I guess that is on me and that you are correct. They're, they're, Gary, our shop superintendent, Gary and I just talked about it briefly. Uh, with a with a class three shirt, um, either way, 
yeah, it's our expectation that we'll see a decrease in the in the replacement of vests because they'll be either that or you know something else. Vest, like you mentioned, they vary in cost, and I'm, I can't guess. I did, I honestly didn't look that hard up. I should have, I'm sorry, but I didn't. I think the last one, I, I mean, I got a good quality one at home, nice one. That, I bet you that was $60, $70 for that one. And I know you can get them down to, you can get them down to $5 if you want, but they're, they're not very, I mean, you get the full wrap around and in pockets on the bottom, like you zippers and. Yes. I, I, I thought listing that um, I'm actually, I value the opinions up here. Again, and like you and you know, back here, of course, because you know more about it than I do. But what I heard at this point, I, I, I'm thinking that the best route to take is with a vendor and stay away from buying. I, I envision other problems coming when you start buying. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, if something happens to a certain gentleman's shirt, but and Okay, well, I want a new one. Well, it's not bad enough for you to get a new one. I, I mean, you, you can run into so many extra problems that would be so simple to stick with the vendor entirely, in my opinion, and avoid all that other potential problem. And you agree. Um, Scott, I, we lost you up there. Did you have any more questions? Nope. Okay. What's your thoughts? Were you thinking of wanting to do something tonight yet, or are you still more in investigations, Pat? Or what? What are you? Um, I'm I'm done investigating unless you give me a direction to go investigate something. We've talked to the vendor, talked with the guys. These have been on these shirts have been on display here for a while. It's not on as an action item. I would just mention so. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. say bring it back as an action well, item. There's a it, it, it's 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 highway policy. Yeah. So technically, I could go ahead and do it, do but it I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, so I, I just to bring it to you. If you want it back as an action item, I definitely we definitely do. I don't see the need to wait. I, I think we should do it now. If we want to do it, all I would have to do is give them a blessing and do it. Probably don't need to do it in a form of a motion. Do you want a motion? I am not the I am not the uh, Hobbard's rule of knowledge, so I don't know if you can. Well, we make it a motion, then it should be binding. Make a motion that we. I got one more quick. Okay, Scott, go ahead. Um, I don't want to throw another wrench into this, but did you get any other uh, quotes? I know that your um, shop guys get Sintas. Was there any other quotes for any other companies on this? So we we did not seek out any other vendors. Uh, we uh, we are under what's called the Omni Agreement with Sintas, and that's a reduced government rate for for uniforms. And that's let's see. At one time we were with um, uh, Unipers. Yeah. Uh, we discontinued that contract, and then we jumped on with Cintas uh, because of that reason. They were considerably less than uh, than Uniforms was at the time. So the, the, the my answer is no, we have not. That is something that we could potentially look at. But but right at the moment, we I say we the county. Um, basically, it's us and solid waste are under this uh, this agreement with uh, uh, Syntax. Okay, I'm okay with it. Okay, I'm okay with it. Okay, I'll make a motion that we go with the uh, uh, with the uniform uh, policy that we discussed here tonight for the pants and uh, the jeans or pants and in shirt for. For the employees, so the, the nine that covers the yeah. week period, so they got exchanged. Okay. okay, well, it's been made and seconded to go ahead with the CentOS and uh, the uniform set up for the employees. 
for any other discussion. I have um, yeah. um, I'm in favor of it, but I don't want to go on record as saying I'm not absolutely convinced that it, because it's not listed as an action item, potentially, but that this is the right way to go about it. If, if it comes back that we need to act differently on it, then we'll have to bring it back at the next meeting. But well, I mentioned that because um, I'm not unfamiliar. I, I'm not trying to brag or not, but I'm not unfamiliar with the rules for it's agendas and things. And um, you know, one of the, I mean, you always got to look at it to make sure that. The, the the basic rule of any agenda for any of the any meeting is that it is understandable to a common person in the public, and not that I, anybody necessarily wanted to show up that it was going to be voted on about uniforms, but um, I don't think this is a, a necessarily the proper way. I do agree with the whole idea, like I said, but um, that, that's all. I'm going to vote for it. But I just wanted to make that. Cynthia, comment. can you give us uh, an idea of what you think? Hopefully, you're here. Mr. Me. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes. can you hear me? All right. Um, so, at the committee level, it's a little bit more informal compared to like a board meeting. And um, I would say you guys could probably do this as an action item. I mean, you guys really don't on your agenda. You don't have like a section called action items or or that. It's kind of maybe in the future, perhaps when you're going to have a discussion, to always just put a template to say discussion and or act on, and then that way you don't have to worry about this in the future. Cynthia, it was my understanding that with the form of government that we're under, and this is kind of policy that I that I actually wouldn't even need highway committee approval to do this. I could potentially enact it on my own without your approval or the committee's approval. But of course, I'm not asking or trying to do that. Obviously, you want to be as transparent as possible. And it, again, uh, if it warrants a, a second month, we can do that. But, but that was my understanding. I think you guys should move forward. Okay. Do you want me to go ahead with the motion? Yes. According okay. to what Pat is saying too, that typically we wouldn't, he's under the impression that he wouldn't have to get our permission, but this is a policy change. So I don't think policy has to be approved by the commission or the oversight. So, but anyway, I would probably just move forward with getting that done. Okay. Uh, is there any other discussion? Um, all, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Scott? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much. Anything on status report? Um, well, I, I, I did add a little bit. Uh, Oh no! Um, I did add a little bit uh, to our uh, seal coating. We we are starting to get some bills in, so I add, I just I threw yeah. I didn't throw numbers in there. Chris gave me the numbers that we have bills for, and I entered those. I didn't make them up. I guess what I'm saying. So there are more bills coming. Now remember, just like I talked earlier, we worked with uh, three other counties on our seal coating. So counties and and highway departments, they're, they're, they vary. They could be one, two, maybe at times three months behind on, on bills. So we will have bills coming in for a seal. So you'll see that change. Um, that, that's really the only major change I made to this. Um, other than I did make a notation in there that, that County uh, M did start, actually there's activity out there on the 12th. Oh, so there's, there's a little bit ahead of what they said too, isn't it? A month ahead, yeah. yeah. But I thought I saw something about the 17th at one time. Uh, there was a 
Facebook post that said we were closing on the yeah. 17th, and then mm -hmm. we had to make a revision to that post that updated it to, okay. right. to, uh, to uh, today. Okay. So the, they did pull the barricades. Uh, they are stripping. Uh, there's activity going on. Okay. You know? All right. Yeah, so there's a, that is going on. Um, in regards to county truck, how I am in this item here, I don't want to get too far off topic, but uh, there has some been there. There's been some preliminary discussions about the potential for activity west of G. So that may that may come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So this year, yeah. okay, he's talking maybe one point five miles ish that they want to try, or you know, depending on what. Well, there's no rain days. Um, so they're ahead of schedule. If they didn't pick up anything major in the uh, last DOT letting, it, it sounds like maybe something will happen mm -hmm. west of G. Anyways, that's for future discussion and yeah. action, I'm sure. So, anyway, yeah. So that's the only thing I updated was that seal coating cost really, and then that the project on that start. We didn't receive another bill. Uh, we didn't get a bill for Z, so I didn't change that. It was the same as it was before. Okay. Highway Department Operations. Okay, so uh, like we were talking earlier, uh, prior to this, we spent a week in our trucks, they have five trucks, spent a week in Wood County uh, on their milling project. So like, like anywhere else, trucking gets to be a premium. And uh, so we did go up there and haul with them for a week. Um, we are mowing, uh, a little bit of a glitch in the mowing. We had a tractor go down. Uh, is back up now. Unfortunately, it was the tractor that we're going to trade. Wasn't anything too major. We got it back up and running. Uh, we did ask. Uh, to trade. Uh, so when our tractor gets here, we want we're going to let that this one go and get our new one. Which is my age. Yeah, yeah. Even if we have to Change. surrender our new tractor back to get the, the mounting done we'll do that at a later time. Yeah. We just we just don't want to keep running the unit we have and take a risk of something else major going wrong with it. Yeah, so we're, we're going to trade. Uh, we're going to uh, let it go as soon as everyone comes in. Um, like I mentioned, I think we our state, uh, the, the state highways and mode are we're working on the county. Uh, Springville is kind of patiently waiting for us to get there. I don't know if we will. And then uh, we did a little bit of mowing and cell waste on the cells uh, for them. Uh, we did our seal coating, that's done. Uh, G, uh, K, and Q. When you look at those, or if you drive on those, they might look just slightly a little bit different. The paint's definitely different. It's wider. Mm -hmm. uh, we are painting the six inch lines as we do these things. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are seal coating with Portage County right now. We plan, our plan, or their plan is to be tied up and done on Monday. So we'll have one more, uh, actually we're working Friday with them. So our guys will be here tomorrow and then finishing up on, on Monday. Uh, we are painting as well. Like I mentioned, we're, we're trying to work in both uh, the paint contracts that we have with the state. We've done some for Wood County. And then of course, uh, in addition, we do paint for Wapaka County as well. Uh, like I mentioned already, County M did start. Uh, there is that outlying possibility that some portion of M west of G will get done. It's thought that it might be some distance from 8th Drive. So wherever they pick off, wherever they feel they can get tied back in. I, I, I uh, in our real preliminary discussion about that was that at a minimum I want to have binder back on County Hill. 
we don't put the surface on, we can we can move it up. Yeah, we put a surface on next next uh, year. That'd be great if it could sit over the winter with this binder on. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. But anyways, we talked about getting at least the binder down. Uh, they were in complete agreement with that. Our new truck is uh, being built. We've had some discussions about that truck here a couple of times. We've had a mountain of dis uh, discussions internally and with the vendors in regards to that new truck. Um, it's going to paint uh, a week. Well, it's going to paint in one week. Uh, we are expecting delivery uh, second or third week of August of that truck. So we were able to, um, after, like I say, a pile and mountain of discussion, after, we were able to get exactly what we were asking for. Remember, our, our initial ask or intent with that truck was to get a left side drop. So what I mean by that is there's an auger on the back that moves material from the center of the truck over to the left side, and that's where it's dispersed on the floor. The original configuration of this truck had a what they call a zero cast spinner or a, a direct a direct cast spinner. They, in theory, they, the material would drop down into the center direct cast spinner and then be placed on the center line or near the center line of the road. I'm not a real big fan of that. I've watched those work. And in order to get the material to the center line, you have to turn your spinner speed up mm -hmm. to, to get enough uh, velocity on the material to get it over there. Now, unfortunately, I've watched salt hit the center line and then hit the ditch. The reality of it is mm -hmm. when that happens. And, and that's just lost material. You, you don't get no melting effect from that on the road. So my ask or my desire from the onset or the very first was to have left side drop and, and, and we're going to get it. And, um, they're actually uh, going to be able to build it for us. So you got a lower speed on the spinner and they lose yeah. as much flying off. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just a curiosity with that previous scenario you talked about, about it high speed, higher, higher velocity to spinners, and hitting and actually making it to the other ditch. Um, when our cars are approaching or something, do they turn that thing off or do they tell it the vehicle when it's driving off? Yes. Yes, they turn it off. And yes, they tell it the vehicle. Um, it's rock salt. Uh, so, I mean, the guy, I, I'm going to answer it two ways. Um, I'm guessing some will probably try to get it shut off and others will not. Um, I've experienced just what you're mentioning is you get you get hit with some rock salt. It's rock salt. It sounds uh, very aggressive, but it is very, uh, in, in theory, it, it shouldn't chip. Easily fractured. Chip, yeah, it's not going to chip your, uh, your paint or your windshield. Sounds bad, but it's really not. And, and, but then again, um, think of, it's not being thrown off the top of the, the truck. No, Our spinner no. is down no, I don't on the bottom left side of that. So it's real height. Even right. Yeah. So I have to get the box up and see what lower yet. Yeah, so uh, talked about the new build. Uh, we have a new vacancy here at the highway department. Our um, fiscal Accounting clerk has taken a new position and within the admin office. So he will be his last day is today. Uh, so he'll be taking on a new role and new responsibilities up at the admin office. So I'm sure we'll be working with Zach periodically here and there. We have asked for periodic support. Uh, so on Monday morning, his first full day. Uh, well, his first day in his new role, uh, he'll report to work here and, and help us. It's a payroll Monday for us, so we'll be here on Monday morning at least. So we did submit paperwork, and that'll be filled, uh, hopefully. 
Uh, it is out at for advertising here. Uh, we also have a offer out for our mechanic, which we're you know, hopefully we get a positive reply or response back from, from that person. So we can see where that goes. This is good. Your turn? Yeah. What's the curiosity of the pay scale for a mechanic? Our starting pay is at 2157, 21. 2170, 21. Is that competitive? Not so much. That would have been, that was my first inclination when you answered it, was that I would have thought uh, a mechanic could command a little bit more. There's some discussions going on already uh, uh, with the gentleman, so we'll see where, where it ends up. I, I I I do think uh, diesel mechanics. I think we're all seeing it, hearing it, or demanding a little higher wage in all fields now. Okay. Just just uh, just uh, how it's going, and we hear it as as counties. Uh, it's not common that, that there's vacancies in that position. So we'll see. We got one uh, in discussion, and hopefully it ends in a in the cause of more. Okay, we've all seen the financial report. Are there any questions or updates on that? Looks a little different than what we typically would see or you folks would see. I mean, we're not we're not quite there yet as uh, with the other document. But this is a, a report that comes out of Stadler. You probably see these in other you know, other committees that you're on. Would go. Yes, in there. I mean, it's going to take time. So, when you look at these, you guys, I'm sure, look at mountains of these at some point or another. You can see what basically year to date expenditures and what's not expended. There's one note uh, in here is made in the county truck highway maintenance. You can see that we've expended some funds there, uh, which is normal. Uh, that's what we do mowing, that's what we do shouldering, that's what we do. Uh, patching and all those things come out of that particular line. So there's expenditures in this happening. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we'll have to work on, not today, probably not next month, but Chris and Admin and us will have to get on, on track so we can identify our funds that are committed to county infrastructure. At the minimum, we uh, committed to 1.5. Mm -hmm. If they go further this year, you may end up spend having to pay a little bit more if you pay on the unit costs. This, well, yeah, you know, you know that, right? Uh, so this two, uh, contract one, contract two, there are different unit costs per, per uh, agreement. And in this, I don't want to say we're okay, but in this year, this scenario, we are okay. Uh, because remember, we carried over 1.5. And then in 2023, this year, we've allocated 1.5. So we actually should have a minimum of 3 million sitting to expect that. So we wouldn't have to ask um, admin for funds to, to uh, cover that cost. It's in 2024 when the bulk of that work gets done. That's where we'll be short. And that's why, we're, you know, if they have to depend on how far they come into this bulk coming back. Yeah. I guess we can hopefully get it all done, yeah. really. But yeah. I mean, yeah. we'd really be asking for for support on where they go from from admin, but start putting that asphalt down and go another mile or two. Mm -hmm. They were they were thinking one point five is what is what come out in our discussion. Okay, if there's any upcoming agenda items like that, no. Uh, next meeting date should be August tenth. Okay with that? Okay, meeting adjourned.